Hello, I'm CEO Captain Bill Kirk with Weather Trends International. I'd like to share with you some of our year ahead forecasts and what we see for you through the year ahead into 2021. But let's first talk about some of the things that we said a year ahead for 2019 and how well some of those forecasts did. Let's start with a review of our year ahead outlook for hurricanes. Back in 2017, for 2018, we actually predicted two major landfalling threat areas, North Carolina and the Panhandle of Florida. That's exactly where Category 5 Hurricane Florence and Category 5 Michael made landfall. Again, predicted those areas very well a year ahead. Last year, we actually thought the high-risk areas were going to be a little further south, more toward the Bahamas, toward South Florida, into Bermuda. And that's exactly where Category 5 Dorian and ultimately Hurricane Humberto made landfall in Bermuda, again, a year ahead. We'll share with you in a few minutes here what we see for 2020, which looks to be a catastrophic season along the East Coast. Next, we told our farmers that the fall harvesting season would be one of the best in decades, really, really warm weather. It actually turned out to be the warmest in 35 years. This was a huge plus for the farm community after such a disastrous spring when it was so cold and rainy in the planting season, this would have been a very detrimental season had it been, as some had projected, an early frost in the fall. Thankfully, that didn't happen. Growing degree days were up 27%, one of the best in decades. Again, so this was a huge plus and this was actually projected a year ahead in our farm cast services. Our year ahead forecast for this past winter suggested it'd be a very short season with a few cold snaps, but snowfall would be down 24%. What actually happened? Snowfall was down 25%, a nearly perfect year ahead outlook. The three cold snaps we expected on our year ahead winter outlook were going to be in middle December, early middle January, and middle February. What actually happened that week before Christmas was the coldest period of the entire winter season. It's in part why we thought ice scraper sales would be up at Christmas time, but overall snow blowers and bird seed sales would be way down. The second coldest week of winter, that Martin Luther King Jr. holiday weekend in middle January. The third coldest week, Valentine's Day weekend, which was really critical for categories like hand and body lotion that did really well over that holiday period. If there was a miss in our year head outlook, it was that early January period where we thought the cold would be extended. But compared to others that were predicting one of the coldest, snowiest winters in eight years since 2013, that did not happen. For nearly a year, our March 2020 year head outlook has been on our homepage, projecting the third warmest March in 35 years and a five week earlier start to spring. So as you can see, our year ahead forecast for spring 2020 is off to a pretty good start. No snow on the ground. This time last year, we had 50% of the country with snow. This year, the least snow across the US in 17 years. It's actually getting a little hot out here. So I think I'm gonna head back inside. So what about the rest of 2020? We factor in trillions upon trillions of statistics and 24 climate cycles to project temperature, rainfall, and snowfall by week, by mile, a year ahead, everywhere on Earth. One of the cycles you're gonna hear about is a strong La Nina developing this year. What does that mean? It means that 9% of the country had drought last year. This year, we're projecting upwards of 50% of the country having dry to drought-like conditions as we go through the summer fall season. We actually think that even expands to 60% as we get into 2021. Sadly, the 2020 tornado season is off to a devastating start with the tragic loss of life in Nashville, Tennessee. However, we have some good news. We actually believe is that we get into the May, June core season of the tornado season, that will actually diminish. We actually think that tornadoes will be down about 40% versus a year ago when the season's said and done. However, hurricanes are another story. Even though we're projecting 20 named systems this year, it's less about the numbers and more about the location. We're very concerned about the Northeast and Florida this year. Is this a 2012 scenario, a sandy year? Maybe, we're very concerned about that September, October timeframe in the Northeast. Back to school in September looks like to be a bright spot with some cooler, wetter weather. But as we transition into the fall, we actually think it's the warmest and driest in four years. Great for our farmer customers, but again, a negative for retail sales. And the other negative combined with that warm, dry fall is an election cycle. The combination will lead to a slowdown in retail sales overall. Winter 21, again, very likely influenced by a moderate to strong La Nina event among many other climate cycle. What's that mean? A very cold December, January timeframe. We think you're gonna hear that term polar vortex again. However, snowfall, while up maybe 15% for the season, we still think it's a below average snowfall year across the country. This is actually good news for retailers. Coming off a really warm, dry fall in Q3, this will be a strong pent up demand period for seasonal merchandise sales as we go into the winter season. This has just been a high level outlook for what we see for you in the year ahead. But the real value in what we do here at Weather Trends International is project your sales by week everywhere on earth. How much inventory do you need for these weather conditions a year from now? Where do you allocate more or less inventory to capitalize on these weather trends? When do you promote and advertise? All of these things we can help you with a year ahead. So let's talk. Thank you.